A lot of you guys have been trying out Xmonad recently uh, because I've made some videos on it in the last couple of weeks. I see a lot of you guys trying out Xmonad. Many of you guys are asking me questions and many of you guys are wanting more videos on Xmonad because you're struggling a little bit with the config. Xmonad is a tiling window manager written and configured entirely in the Haskell programming language. Haskell can be a challenge to get around, and I'm not a Haskell programmer. I'm not a programmer at all by trade, but I do know enough Haskell that I can read the documentation and I can hack on Xmonad a little bit. So today I wanted to show you a little bit about manage hooks, prompts, and Hoogle. Let's start with manage hooks. That's basically setting window rules. You know, if I launch this program, it should always be on this monitor, on this workspace. It should always be floating things like that. So I'm going to switch over to the desktop here and uh, I've scrolled down into my config file here where I have manage hooks. Actually, I'm going to go to the top of this config file and I'm going to scroll down here just to show you how massive this xmonad.hs, you know, my config file is. You know, it's a massive file. And the reason my xmonad config is so large, it's probably larger than, than most example configs you'll find, is because I've tried to stuff so much into my config. Uh, pretty much everything I know about xmonad, everything that I think is possible or I, I've, I've discovered, I put it in my config even if I don't really use it in real life. And the reason is, is because I know so many of you go to my configs and basically treat my configs as like, the xmonad documentation so i've really tried to put everything i could into this config even though probably half of the stuff in this config i don't even use but let's get back to manage hooks so i've got this section in my config and i've got a comment here it says manage hooks and i'm going to read the comments up under it here it says quote set some rules for certain programs examples include forcing certain programs to always float or to always appear on a certain workspace Forcing programs to a certain workspace with the do shift command. You will see several instances of do shift here. That requires x do tool. So you need a third party program called x do tool for these do shifts to work. You probably already have x do tool installed on your system. Many of you will. If you don't, just install x do tool. Uh, you need the class name or the title of the programs that we're setting rules for. If you don't know the class name or the title of a certain program, you can always get that with the xprop tool. You might have xprop already installed on your system if you don't just install it. For example, say I was setting a rule for Alacrity, which is my terminal emulator of choice. If I didn't know the class name or the title of Alacrity, I could run an xprop. You see, my mouse cursor turned into this crosshair, meaning any window that I click on, it's going to give me the window information basically right here in the terminal. So I'm going to click on the terminal itself and I get all this information, uh, window state and, and things like that. But you see somewhere in here, window manager class, you see I get alacrity. So that's class name and title there. So if I wanted to, I could do a rule here. I could do class name equals and then question mark and then in quotes alacrity and I could tell it do shift and then after do shift we need to include this command basically action equals x do tool. Remember you need to have x do tool installed on the system and then run the command basically a key binding super plus two www is the name of super plus two. It's the second workspace. So basically what this does is anytime I would launch, in this case, Firefox, let's take this first line. Every time I launch Firefox, it immediately runs this do shift command and it basically sends Firefox to the second workspace. So let me show you this. My mouse cursor, I'm on workspace two right now, but I'm going to move my mouse cursor over to my far left monitor. That's workspace one. Typically, if I launch a program right now, it should launch on workspace one because that's where the mouse is. That's what has focus. But if I launch Firefox right now, it doesn't launch on Workspace 1 because I've set that rule for Firefox to always launch right here on Workspace 2. Most of these window rules I, I don't actually use. I, I just mainly put this stuff in my config again because I know so many of you guys go to my configs for documentation. So some of them I use the class name. Some of them I use the title. You see many of them I'm just giving you examples of sending a certain application to a certain workspace or this one right here title equals oracle vm virtual box manager and what does it do it runs this command do float it means anytime i launch virtual box 
This very first window is called Oracle VM Virtual Box Manager. And because that's its title, what does it make it do? It makes it float. <laughs> So it always makes this window float. That's how that works. Same thing with class name equals GIMP. GIMP is always a floating window in my config. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is something that I really haven't used before until the last couple of days playing around with it. I've always known it was possible in Xmonad. I've just never used it. And that is Xmonad has the ability to have its own run launchers, run prompts. Basically, it has its own like built-in D menu if you wanted to use it. And I've never used it because I've always been a D menu user or sometimes a Rofi user in the past. And I've never found the need to actually use the Xmonad prompt, but it's really neat. Well, like when you start reading the documentation, it's kind of like the sky's the limit on this thing. Again, you got to know a little Haskell and you got to hack on it a little bit, but I do a search for Xmonad prompt here in the browser. You see, I get this module here xmonad.prompt and basically it tells me a little bit about it there's some examples here xmonad.prompt.shill xmonad.prompt.xmonad xmonad.prompt.ssh apparently there's a variety of these prompts not just one so what I did is I, I read through the documentation a little bit today and I came up with a lot of Xmonad prompts. You see, I've got several commented out because I, I haven't really figured out what I want to do with those. But I've got Xmonad prompt, Xmonad prompt shill, Xmonad prompt man, and Xmonad prompt dot ssh. And let me go further down the config here. And then I added a bunch of lines to my config. So you guys, if you haven't pulled down my config lately, I'm going to push this modified config to my GitLab uh, before I post the video, go get this latest config and you will see a couple of new sections. So uh, after I import all the Xmonad prompt modules that we need, I have this section here, Xprompt key map. And basically it sets Emacs like key bindings in the Xmonad prompt. For example, if I start typing maybe a sentence or something, you know, I could do control F to go forward. It's an Emacs key binding or control B to go back or, you know, now I don't use Emacs really anymore. Uh, the only reason I have this the way it is right now, and I probably will modify it to something more to my liking is I found this on the internet. I found this on somebody's GitHub or something. And he had, I guess he was an Emacs user. So he was using these very Emacsy key bindings. So I just went with it, but I'll probably modify it a little bit to my heart's content here. Then I've got this next section that's actually called X prompt. And this is defining a few things in the prompt, such as what the font should be, what the background color should be, foreground color, the highlight colors, whether the position should be at the top or the bottom or the center of the screen. Uh, I put it at the top. What's, what the height of that prompt should be. So imagine, you know, you always set a height for something like D menu or Rofius. Same thing here. I set it to 20 pixels high. You can also set a default text, meaning if I hit the key binding to bring the prompt up, you know, it's automatically populated maybe with a certain command, maybe some, something you run all the time. I, I can't imagine that would be too useful. So it's a, by default, it's just an empty string. And that's what I left it as. There's some other stuff that uh, we could play around with with the settings. But let me show you this in action. So by default, in my config, I have super shift enter runs D menu. This is D menu. Let me escape. I'm going to go find my D menu key binding here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and comment out D menu because I'm going to use the same key binding. But instead of running D menu, I'm going to run the Xmonad shell prompt. So let me go back up here and I'm going to uncomment that line. So super shift return runs shell prompt now. A shell prompt DTXP config, meaning go grab all of this here. So let me escape and I'm going to colon W to write here in Vim. And then I need to super shift R to restart Xmonad. And if everything worked correctly, super shift return should not run D menu anymore. It should run the built in Xmonad shell prompt. And there you go. That is the Xmonad prompt. You see it says run colon. And then if I type something, say I typed A. And if I wanted to get a list of all the possibilities that were remaining that I could run just with the letter A, I could hit tab. 
and you know if I keep hitting tab I could actually cycle through this list of programs here so that is the built-in prompt I haven't really configured it that much I I'm assuming it's extremely hackable you know depending on <laughs> how much I want to learn about the X prompt code like I need to get into that file and really learn some of what's going on with the Haskell and, and the file I'm talking about if I go back to the browser so we're importing this library here anyway somewhere on my system there will be a prompt.hs and you know this is that file here and by default you see data xp config equals font background color foreground color all of that it, of course it has default settings all I did in this config here dt xp config equals defaults but <laughs> let's change some things so the things I don't mention leave them as the defaults but here's some things that I wanted to change from what was in the default now let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see this config one interesting thing I found in the default config here the prompt is autocomplete autocomplete is set to nothing by default and then you know, I, I wanted autocomplete. You know, I wanted, hey, when I start typing something, if there's no other options available, I wanted to just run the program. For example, if I start typing A for alacrity, there's a lot of A's, but AL, it narrows the list down to just a few programs. But ALA, there's only one program left to run at that point. There's only one program on the system that begins with ALA, and that's alacrity. It should just automatically run it without me hitting enter without me having to type the rest of the word and I was kind of confused on how to do that because uh, it tells me autocomplete should be in this format maybe integer wasn't really sure <laughs> what to do with that I had to dig in the documentation a little bit and one of the things I found is that I could change nothing here if I wanted to I, I made a comment just you know for future reference I could do just and then a number and the numbers are microseconds. So if I did 1 million, that would be one second. I'm going to do 100,000, which is a tenth of a second. Let me write. Let me restart next monad, and you will see what this does. So I'm going to do super shift enter. And then if I type A, now I've got a lot of A's, right? If I type L, there's still a lot of things left. If I type ALA, it automatically launches alacrity because it was the only thing left that fit what we were typing. Another setting that was in that same kind of format, if I go back to the, the default prompt file here, was max complete rows was in this format, maybe, and then a dimension. And what this does is if I do super shift enter here and I start typing, I'll just do the letter A and I hit tab. You know, it gives me everything that begins with A that I could possibly run. Max complete rows basically sets the maximum number of rows that are listed so if I set it to five there's only five rows of stuff instead of you know that massively long list so I could do just five here I'm gonna write restart xmonad and let's run the run prompt I'm gonna type a and then I, if I hit tab you see now we only have five rows of possibilities instead of the entire list now when I started reading the prompt documentation on the Xmonad site and on the Haskell site, there's more than just this default kind of Xmonad shell prompt. There are a variety of prompts. There, there was like half a dozen prompts it mentioned. It mentioned an application launcher. It probably just launches the dot .desktop. Uh, uh, you know, the, the files that have dot .desktop files. Uh, and there was a, a man page prompt, there was an SSH prompt, there, there was a million prompts. So I just played around with some of the ones I thought were the most interesting. So you see, I went ahead and enabled the SSH prompt. So I imported xmonad.prompt.ssh and then I just added this config. And, and of course it requires these sections to the xprompt key map and the xprompt uh, settings here. And then once I have that, you know, I set it to super shift S. So if I do super shift S, it says SSH2 colon. And then where do you want to SSH2? So if I type, I don't know, maybe I could type distrotube.com. Wow, and it actually, you know, it actually auto-completed that. I don't know how it knew where, where to go there. That, that was weird. 
I probably need to turn off the autocomplete, or maybe I could set the autocomplete not to actually autocomplete when I'm doing the SSH prompt, but that was a little weird. Uh, you guys see, I also have set uh, super shift and M for man prompt. As a matter of fact, I should correct this here because that's not a correct comment. Man page prompt. Write that. Restart that. Make sure there's no errors. There is an error. On line 208. Ah. It's that random M there. I don't know how that got there. Let's let's just delete that line. That's right. Let's restart Xmonad. See if we get any errors. We do not. Now Super Shift M says manual page. All right, so we want to search for a man page. Sure, let's search for a man page. Does Xmobar have a man page? Apparently it doesn't because nothing came up. Let's search for D menu. I know it has a man page. Yeah, D menu's man page came up just fine. So I, I guess if I, we type something that doesn't have a man page, obviously we're not going to get anything. So Super Shift M one more time. Let me do a man page on X term. Yeah, and the autocomplete works on that as well. I actually did not hit enter. I typed X term. I don't even know if I got all the way to the M. I might have just typed the first four <laughs> and then it just auto launches. I, I kind of like that. It, it's a little freaky at first though. Uh, I don't know, especially with the SSH prompt. I, I may want to turn that off. It, that was a little too weird. So that's all I really wanted to show you in the config as far as manage hooks and then all the Xmonad prompts available. But I did want to sh share with you one very important topic. If you guys are really serious about diving into Xmonad and especially diving into the Haskell programming language, uh, you need to know about Hoogle. Hoogle is the Haskell API search engine and you can find it at hoogle.haskell.org. This is your go-to website for all things Haskell. So if you wanted to search for something, I don't know, uh, some kind of module or function or whatever, you know what, we were just doing some stuff with manage hooks. If I just typed a manage hook, you know, I, I get some information right here in Google and it will take me to the documentation. It will actually take me exactly to where manage hook is in this document. It's kind of cool. It's just fantastic. The Haskell documentation is fantastic, but what if you don't want to open a web browser to get this information? Well, there is a command line, Google, that will give you this at the command line. And let me show you this. Let me switch back to the desktop. I'm going to open up another terminal emulator here, clear the screen. And to get Google, the command line interface application installed on your system, you can use Cabal. Cabal is the Haskell package manager, if you will. If, if you have Cabal installed on your system, you may need to do a Cabal update first and then Cabal install Hoogle would get you that. Now, those of you that are on Arch based systems, Hoogle is actually in the Arch repository. So you could simply do a sudo pacman s Hoogle and give it your root password. I will decline the install because I've already got Hoogle installed. Once you have it installed, you can just run Hoogle and then if you want to do a search for a module or function or something like shell prompt. Remember that was the command. If I go back into the config here, right now super shift return runs this command shell prompt, right? Super shift return. That is actually the run prompt. If we wanted to run a Google search on it and you can see that shell prompt is found in this particular library, xmonad.prompt.shell. And then it tells you basically what the command does, what this function does. It, uh, basically takes the XP config. Now the XP config was, it's actually all the default settings in prompt.hs that I showed you earlier in the browser. But of course we override some of the defaults with our own settings here, but it's taking that config and it's sending it to X, the X display server. If I didn't know what XP config, I mean, we could do a search for that and it tells me what XP config, you know, you can really go down this rabbit hole of really learning a ton about uh, Haskell and of course about Xmonad because it's written in Haskell. Now before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show. I need to thank Michael, Mitchell, Gabe, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Lee Request, Omri, Paul, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this episode. I want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well because this channel is sponsored by you guys, the community. This list of names here, this is all of my supporters over on Patreon. And if you'd like to support my work, 
Consider doing so. You'll find DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.